Well, thank you for joining our conference today. And we will now have the keynote address. Please welcome fellow of Rakuten Institute of Technology, Mr. Yukihiro Matsumoto. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, somehow, uh, Mikitani-san is went away, so <laughs> I had to. I have. I had forced to speak before you, in re replacing Mikitani-san. But anyway, we are engineers. It's the, the theme of the com uh, conference. So, so we. As an engineer, as a programmer, as a creator, so I'm I'm gonna talk with you, and I I, I don't think I'm gonna tell you something new except few uh, very few things. But I hope I will show you some something some new insight. Okay, let's start. Could you could you turn on that right? Okay, aiming the moving target. So. In 1919, so 23 years ago, so I graduated the university, so I, I became a professional programmer. So I was an engineer. So, so back then, so it was quite big uh, bubble in Japanese economy. So the, I hired by a company which does, uh, we did uh, some kind of the enterprise software development. So back then, the software development scene is pretty different, was pretty different. We had some kind of three-year project, like uh, the, uh, the consult, the, the clients, then the analysis, the system for one year, development for a year, then uh, the testing, then the, the so, Two, 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 three years project is not uncommon. And then the project forming was kind of like a waterfall. So define the, the project, write down some kind of the, the high level uh, specification, then the lower level specification, then code, then test, then uh, give it to the clients or something like that. So the the business decision was pretty conservative. So back then, I felt something wrong, but I didn't, I didn't understand what was wrong. It was, but it, in my point of view, current point of view, it was quite wrong. So I felt something wrong, but I couldn't explain why it was wrong. But after more than 20 years of experience, I was an experienced programmer. <laughs> so it's, it was because back then, we are depending on something, the false assumptions. The few false assumptions. The false assumption number one, which is we know what we make. There was wrong. We didn't know. We didn't know what we're going to make. Okay, false assumption number two, which is we know what we want. <laughs> false assumption number three, which is the situation will not be changed. In reality, in reality, this, this is what we thought. We, we thought we knew what we make, and we thought we knew what we want, and we knew the situation will keep being the same or similar forever, but it wasn't the case. In reality, we don't know what software is. So software does not have any physical entity. It's kind of information, virtual entity. 
So it doesn't have any limitation from physical law. So, so imagine you're building uh, your architecture. So you're building a, the so rock and tower, this building. So it is, it is uh, controlled by the physical law. You have to have uh, some kind of the, the beams and the pillars, and uh, you have to make, create from the, the irons and con uh, concrete or something like that. You can uh, calculate how strong the building is or something like that. So assuming the earthquake or something like that, so the, you have to design the building in certain constraint. But building software, except for a small, teeny example program like the Hello World, that's not, not quite complex, but the software systems are quite easily be complex, very, very complex. And uh, it's kind of like a most complex creation has human being ever done. So it is quite difficult to grasp everything in the software. For example, like a, the very common things like a Toyota Prius has, say, tens of millions of lines of code in, in the systems in a, in a teeny automobile. Or Linux has a nine, 90, 000, uh, 90 million lines of code itself. It is quite huge. It's quite difficult to understand everything. So, so no document but code can explain the detail. So we don't know. Beside that, we don't know the future. So we cannot tell the future. So when we decided the date of the conference today, so we didn't expect the typhoon. <laughs> we didn't expect the earthquake last night. <laughs> so we certainly we don't know the future. So we are not prophets. So we have wrong forecasts. So the inner systems, we don't know what we should make. So the purpose of the software is help people, or the purpose of the enterprise software is the maximum the business value to maximize the business value. But uh, we don't know what makes uh, business value maximize. Like, uh, you know, before, Say, for example, Twitter came. No one imagined Twitter was success. The only 140 character uh, message is too short for most of us. Most of us. So, if someone came to me with uh, the idea of the Twitter, so we are going to the chat system. Every message is restricted to. to, to uh, 140, char uh, 140 characters. So they, if they ask me to investment, I certainly I would I would reject them. <laughs> this is a crazy idea. This, <laughs> but but somehow the Twitter was succeeded. It's kind of like an infrastructure of the IT world, or the, maybe the human being, something. So we are quite difficult to forecast the future. We don't know what, what would maximize the, the business value. So, so we have to admit, we don't know anything. So it's kind of, it's kind of old uh, Greek physicians do this. We have to know we don't, that we don't know. So 20 years ago, we sh should have admitted our ignorance. We should have, but we didn't. Instead, we ignored our ignorance. So when we know little, we have very few choices, very few strategies to take. So strategy number one, which is the ostrich algorithm. Ostrich algorithm. Ah. <laughs> So that is uh, ignore everything and wait. 
like uh, in the in the snow the sandstorm, the ostrich uh, dug into the, the hit, hit their heads in the sand, then just they just wait, they just wait, the uh, the till the sand, uh, sandstorm ends. But this is this is very very good strategy, and the, uh, we have instinct to take this strategy, like uh, in the history of the human being or the uh, the life form in the, on the earth. So this strategy works pretty good often. Only when situation will recover. Sandstorm ends sometimes. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and when winter will end, and spring will would come. So in that kind of situation, the ostrich algorithms, very, very good strategy. But Unfortunately, not in the IT industry. Okay, conservative strategy. So this is much smarter to learn from the past. So we have something good uh, project. We had some good, good project. The project succeeded. So we just follow that pattern. This is the conservatism. So this is very, very good strategy in the past, and uh, you know, the many politicians do this strategy, take this strategy. But this is good strategy unless factors don't change. Like, uh, you know, this is Bible. So the human beings, the nature of the humanity won't change that much. So we see the, the text, all text, like a literature, Bibles, and thing. So you, we have the uh, human activities, and uh, the the mind and the nature of humans are quite similar to us, the the present humans. But but unfortunately, not in the IT industry. The conservative strategy is not very really, does not work very really well in the IT industry, just because the situation changed very quickly. So in the, 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 the Alice in the Wonderland, so the Fed red, Fed's red Queen, now here you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. It's quite similar to the uh, IT industry. So if you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. So you have to run as fast as you can, just to stay the current position. So you have to go somewhere else. So you have to run even faster. Okay, so that's the reason, so the, the conservative strategy doesn't work well for us. So the strategy number three is living in the fantasy land. Yeah, nice unicorn. <laughs> uh, it's kind of similar to ostrich algorithm, but worse. <laughs> uh, go forward with false assumptions. So we, I, I introduced uh, three, uh, three strategies, the ostrich algorithm, the conservative strategies, and the living in the fantasy land. So what do you think? Which strategy did we take? If you have choice, what strategy did you take? What, what strategy did, did we take in 20 years ago? Do you have any idea? I, I, I told you the answer. So what strategy will you take if you were them? So none of them are good. None of them are good. So actually, so the 20 years ago, we took the third, the worst strategy. So everyone was dreaming, welcome back to the desert of reality. In the world of uncertainty, only working strategy is number four, <laughs> trial and error. But to take the, this strategy, so we have some, some kind of preconditions. 
So to do to take this strategy, we need to be able to try many times. So once you failed, you doom. <laughs> so no one will try. So, but okay. But if you even if you fail, you lose something, but little. So you are going to try many times. So you don't know the the exact answer. You don't know what to how to success. So you you try and try and try with some cost, but some little cost. So then we need to be able to, we need to be able to try at low cost. Twenty years ago, they are not true. So the the cost of failure is pretty expensive. The software development itself was pretty expensive. The computers was, were expensive. Network connection was expensive. So 20 years ago, there was no, virtually no internet. So we have to build up their own network. We have to buy huge computer to build up this, the multi-user system. It would cost millions and millions of dollars. So the failure never be allowed back then. So they needed to optimize not to fail, not fail. They, they weren't optimized to success. They weren't optimized to, to create great software. They were, they were optimized not to fail, to, to deliver something, something usable at least. And uh, at the cost of satisfaction. So the, the, the final result of the, the project was not satisfiable, but OK, usable. And uh, you know, not having the computer system is kind of you know, the, the weakness in the business. So they had to, they forced to, to uh, invest on the IT systems. So no matter how great, how, how horrible uh, the result is, was. 20 years later now, so computers are very cheap. So you can buy a computer in uh, the, uh, the appliance store, the even faster than the, the, the supercomputer of that age. So cloud computing is even cheaper. So you can pay uh, several, uh, several dollars for per hour to get uh, some kind of a realistic web application. So network connection is cheap and ubiquitous. You, can, you, you don't have to, uh, to create your own network. Your internet is just there. Just, you just use internet. So the, you don't have to deliver the, the client system no, no longer. You can just have the browsers. So the software development is pretty cheap comparing to the past days. So we became more productive so we, the software system development is, became more abstract. So you can uh, sometimes ignore the very gory detail of the, uh, the hardware. And then we have better tools comparing to the 20 years ago, and we surely have better language. This is the place we, where you have to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like Ruby. <laughs> so and you, you have tons of open source software. So it's the situation changed very drastically. So the, the way of the software creation is changed very drastically. So and now we can rely on the, the collaboration via internet. So you know, the, man, man, 20 years ago when, when I was uh, hired by the small uh, software company in Japan, we are prohibited to send email to abroad. So, <laughs> I work on the open source software. Back then, we called it the, called them the free software. Then, so I was get, received the email from the university in the states. I I think, and then I I don't remember vaguely. I remember vaguely, but you know, the, I replied. But a uh, few hours later, the error mail was re uh, returned. So you are not allowed to send mails upload. 
your organization does not pay the money to, to get the internet, international net connection or something like that. Just 20 years ago. And uh, then I uh, sent a mail to my friend in the university. So then to forward to the... To <laughs> man, man. It's, 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 it's kind of like a, made me feel, feel like a tech caveman or something. But uh, it's only 20 years ago. But now, it's quite easy to connect everywhere. You can even send a, send a mail to, say, the, the Mars, if you have, if you, if you have something, someone in the, in, on the Earth, uh, on the Mars. But, and, uh, but now you, we can have the, the whole globe uh, collaboration via internet. So now we can have some kind of the social coding. Like, a, you know, the, but a few years ago, so we have the software development is driven by a team, very strict team. But nowadays, the, especially open source software, so the software creation is done by uh, the voluntary team. So even if the, the development itself is driven by the, the specific team, so the many other people can involve or get advice or something, uh, you can help them. So the, the collabor software development collaborations went some kind of the social things. So the 20 years ago, our goal was to create the software somehow. Having computer system is the power. But, you know, now, 20 years later, our goal is to create the great software, not just the software. So everyone has software. So just having more, just having position, uh, just having software, mere position is not the power anymore. So you have to be, uh, you have to be, uh, ha you have to have great software to, do, to compete. So we need, to, we need great software. But how? How do we create great software? How do we create great software? So of course you don't know. <laughs> of course we don't know. Yeah, know your ignorance. Of course, you, of course, we don't know how to create great software. So, the, by minimizing the cost, use the better tool, or even cloud, and Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Elixir. <laughs> and tons of open source software. You don't have to build up everything from scratch, so you have to rely on Linux, you have to rely on Java, you have to rely on Ruby, or MySQL, PostgreSQL. We have tons of components we can use, so we now can stand on the shoulders of giants. So, the, you have to do, you don't have to do everything by yourself. Rely on open software. Open source software is very crucial. So by the sense of extreme programming, so if open source is the good thing to have, so open source everything you create, but core competence. By doing that, you can form the community. Build a community around your project, your software. Not just, not just for open source software, but every software you create. So build an open community. So you don't have to uh, restrict the member of the community to the, to the member of your software project. So open to everything. everything in your organ everyone in your organization or everyone in the world. The, 
it doesn't matter uh, the, the component, the software, is open source or not. So to do that, minimize your project. So it is quite difficult to, to open source the, the whole big picture, whole big software. But uh, you know, the, this component make something part of your software as a component and the usable parts of the software then make it open source or the, the, or the library you can use, you can reuse in your, the next project. Then if it's possible, open source it. So in that sense, deorganize your project, deorganize your software, deorganize your project itself. So the, you know, your software does not belong to you or your team. It does belong to everyone, if it's, it, it, if it's appropriate. Then, the, form the community, so, so that make everything up to, com up to community. So, the, it's, for me, so I started uh, creating Ruby in 1993, 20, just 20 years ago, then, at that time, I didn't expect these things. So they're giving an English presentation before the hundreds of people, or the, the expect, I did not expect that my language is used by the so many people, maybe millions of people around the world. That's what I didn't expect. I created my programming language as a pet project, in a, a kind of like a hobby. So, you know, I. I had been a language geek, programming language fan for a long time. So I studied, I learned, I enjoyed learning, uh, studying about the programming language. So I just created my own programming language to, to play with. So I have no particular problem to solve by the language I create. Just I wanted to design a programming language of my own. But somehow, it, the des design of the language was pretty good for me, and uh, unexpectedly good for you guys. <laughs> so the ma many programmers all over the world found Ruby as a, their favorite programming language. They chose Ruby to, uh, for their next project. So that's gradually from the community then community asked me very interesting things. So there are things we, I didn't imagine. So back then, 1993, we didn't have any web. So the, the Ruby was started as a kind of a teeny scripting programming language, like a, you know, Perl or Shell or something like that. But, but in reality, so web has come so everyone used Ruby to write up the, the web application. So then came a Ruby on Rails that the boost the popularity of the language. So it's quite difficult to uh, foresee the future, I admit. So I advise you to admit that your ignorance. Then form the community. Don't restrict the future of your software, of, the, of, the, your, of the, your software, your project. Then, the, as a, I worked on the free software and open source software for the last 20 something years. So the key to success in free software development is keep moving forward. This is the secret. Yeah, that we are, we are kind of like a shark. If we stop swimming, we die. <laughs> we need to keep moving forward or die. So if open source software stop evolving, stop, stop in, in, uh, if the community or the developers stop uh, improving the software, that gradually lose attractiveness, no, it, it would be no longer charming. So the, the community, the people in the community will go somewhere else 
to, to find something more interesting, more fun, more enjoyable. So to be attractive is the key. Uh, be, being attractive. Attra being attractive is the key to success in to create the great software in open source way. So I advise you to keep moving forward. And uh, run as fast as you can. Just to stay, just going somewhere else, somewhere better, run as fast as you can. And try often and fail early. So I was lucky that my first the public programming language named Ruby was succeeded. But you know, but your next try may not may not success, may not succeed. But that's okay, that's okay. So fail often. You it's not your fault to to fail to predict the future. You are not your fault not to success, succeed. So change the big picture, change big picture. So the, we often feel like uh, the failure is the end of the world. We lose everything. We are doomed. But in reality, that's not the, the good way. That's not a happy life. So no one will try in this picture. So you have to success, you have to be innovative, but if you fail, you will be doomed. It's kind of like a, you know, Star Wars Empire. Uh, you failed, you die. <laughs> I, I have been very, very wondered why people, why these members, these soldiers, be, uh, stay belonging to this kind of this organize, organization. So we shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't be like that. So the, the big picture we do want to be in the part of is you can okay to fail. You try something, but don't make very big, big mistake. Don't make very big money lose. <laughs> but otherwise, you can okay to fail. Does the organization, does the company, does the society I'd like to be part of? So I, I will say it again, keep moving forward, create great, so great software, and change the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Matsumoto. Uh, I, I, I think I assume to uh, speak 10 more minutes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but you know, the, if we, that means we have the 10 to 12 extra minutes. So if it's okay, we are, we are, I, I'm gonna receive some kind of Q&A session. Oh, okay. So does anyone have a question? Uh, I think, I believe you have said that we have better tools, better languages compared to 20 years ago. Uh, and my, yeah, quest, my question is, are you still using Emacs to write your code? <laughs> uh, yeah, Emacs is a great tool since, since 1970 something. Yeah, this is, this is too great to replace. No, okay. I, I, excuse me, I lied. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I didn't find any, anything, any better tool for the editor, so the, the please create the better one. Except BIM. <laughs> so my question is this. You started by saying that 20 years ago we were ignorant. Yep. And uh, yeah, we still are. 
I just wanted to make sure that we had gotten a whole lot more enlightened because we thought we knew everything back then and we seem to think we know everything now. What are we going to be saying in 20 years? Uh, we still know anything. <laughs> <Okay>. <coughs> so the few, since a few thousand years ago, we, are not, we, don't, we didn't know anything about the future. So we didn't know anything about the success. So we, we, had, we had been doing trials and, and errors for a long, long time. So we just keep do, being that. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Please go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, we, I understand we should uh, move forward faster. Uh, but we need to the energy. Uh, so what do you, uh, what do you think uh, energy of the moving forward? I think one of the energy is a motivation, but motivation is very limited and uh, depends on the uh, one of human. Uh, probably I, we need uh, more energy, I think. What do you think about, the, about this? So the... He is asking, what is the driving force of the uh, to keep moving forward? Yeah. So, the my answer, I I only knew that to uh, the motivation is everything. So the I only knew the two key uh, things behind the motivation. The the first one is freedom. So if you are forced to do something, so you are not motivated in general. So the 20 years ago, as I said, the very lower level programmer, so I was ordered everything. So this is, the, this is the paper, this is how you write code in, in Japanese. The paper is written in Japanese. I was only to assign to translate this Japanese into C back then. It was, it was boring. I was not motivated at all. But now, so, I'm designer of the programming language, so I have, I have some kind of freedom to make uh, some decision or design. So that freedom is uh, the, my key source of motivation. Uh, the, the second one is more earthly, which is money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. And the next question, yes. Thank you so much for a great presentation. My question, I like, really like the idea of that we can, uh, it's okay to fail. And, but uh, you know, FNY, we are working for a company, a big company, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's challenging. Uh, do you know some good uh, mechanism or uh, best practice to introduce uh, this such a good uh, the concept, uh, in particular the development of the kind of enterprise uh, software. Oh. Yeah, uh, the, the fundamental idea against a uh, bigger company is quit. <laughs> 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 yeah, form your organization. So the, the, in general, big company doesn't uh, respect you as a creator so you, they want to be a, the part of the organization. The, you know, the, you, they consider you as a gear in general, especially in, the, in, in Japanese IT industry. So, so if your organization, your company, they uh, respect you, so I advise you just quit. <laughs> the, there, there are several better companies. Yeah, the, the, at least part of Rakuten company is uh, that kind of better place. So, or the, we have uh, many better but smaller companies. And it, you know, otherwise, you can start up your new, new company or new service, your business. You, so in general, so being a leader is a crucial to have freedom. So if your company, your situation allow you to be you, uh, a leader of your life. So you, I uh, advise you to 
just rebel. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I don't understand this. This is this is a problem. Yes. Okay. Um, would it be okay to change your the um, salutation of your name from San to Sama, because you seem to be promoting a revolution. Um, <laughs> you took a risk. You took a chance. Uh, you're not afraid to make mistake. Um, and in this society, that's not very normal. That's that's not what. We are in a society. We 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 don't want to take a risk. We don't want to make mistakes. We don't want to lose, and precisely that, that's what you've done. So, um, don't you think you deserve being uh, Masimoto Sama? <laughs> so, yeah, I <laughs> I I don't agree. Just because you know, the, I I was not the strategist. So the this this strategy things was formed up by the afterwards. That's kind of cheat. So if, if I w were come up with these ideas before I tried, so I, w I deserved that, that kind of the, the respect. But you know, I'm a too lazy to do that. I was, I was a lazy programmer, too lazy to do my assigned work. So I, I, as a programmer, I do want do some kind of that, say, my pet project. So I want I wanted to enjoy my programming. So the creating, designing programming language and implementing it is the much more fun than working as a assign, working as a programmer as a, in an assigned task. So I I devoted most of my time in, in, to Ruby. Then I spent very few time in the assigned task for 20 years. So that made me itself. So I was pretty lucky that I wasn't fired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was pretty lucky that the uh, people everywhere, everywhere, especially the Dave Thomas there, found Ruby and they promote the language to the world. So, so the, I, I don't think that that kind of being lucky deserved the, 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 the respected word of Sama. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. And one more question. Anyone? Maybe not. OK. So we'd like to end the session. Thank you very much, Mr. Matsumoto. Thank you. And now we'll have uh, about 15 minute break. And at two o'clock, we'll start the next presentation, Japan Ichiba's Architecture by Mr. Takao Shiono and Mr. Kazuya Sakamoto of Rakuten. And there are other sessions also starting at two o'clock on the fifth floor and the 13th floor. Please check the program for more detail.